action. Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a pencil drawing of a red fox's head. This is a black and white copy of a portrait I had done in color. I thought it would be a great subject for me to teach you how to draw one of my favorite animals. Okay, so let's get started. As always, I want you to start with finding where on the page you're going to put your fox's head. Children have a tendency to, to draw very, very small. We want to use the whole page. So I'm drawing very dark right now so the camera can pick it up. But you would do this, as always, light on your paper. Okay. So we're looking for size, shape, proportions. I'm going to do an oval here for this ear. I'm going to go across here and measure how far I think this ear is from the other one. And another oval. I'm going to drop a line down the center. And although my portrait, the nose is slightly turned, I'm going to draw this fox looking straight on for e easier educational purposes. Okay, so after I've dro dropped my line, I'm going to decide where the eyes are. Usually the eyes are in the center of the skull, but because he's so fluffy, that this part could confuse us. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, we can't really see the skull. I'm going to travel down from here. I'm going to make a line across for where the eyes are. I'm going to travel down my line and make a line where I think the nose is. A little bit lower, the mouth. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect yet, and the chin. We wanna get our locations correct before we do any detail. I'm going to go across from the snout to where I think the eyes are. Now, that was too big a circle. See how I am also judging where in relationship to that ear this eye is and how far out to the side of the head. I'm going to go across and lay in the other eye, the area. Again, not thinking about detail yet. So I want to look at my distance from here to here, my distance down to the nose. You can. Quite often with pet portraits, you can think of a V that the nose is in relation, what the nose is in relationship to the eyes. Then the, this is a very helpful piece under the nose that helps us find the mouth and the chin. Okay. Now you would be drawing these lines lightly at home. So I have another one here for myself that's lighter so we don't have to take time for me to lighten those lighten those lines okay so i have my location my size my my proportions correct now i can think more about the detail The fox's eyes have a slit in their pupil is a slit just like a cat. To start off with, I'm just going to do a circle and the slit. We'll come back to the eyes later with more detail. I just want to get started. The nose, um, it's a great thing to study the different noses of different animals. The nose of a fox is shaped a bit like a Vix lozenge. <laughs> and of course we'll have two nostrils. We're just going to very Lightly put those in now. 
and go down. If you notice, I'm holding my pencil still in the sketch mode because I don't want to get too tight or detailed yet. And the chin. You'll see on each side of the snout are some circles for the whiskers. I'm going to just lightly put in a couple right now, just to remind me not to forget to do them at the end of the portrait, which has happened. Okay, let's go up to the ears. Alrighty, so, Remember we talked about contour drawing in the past, so now I'm going to do uh, the contour of this fox's ears. So where do I wanna stop with this ear? I'm also going to measure this way. So I'm gonna go from my eye out. I'm a little high there, so I'm going to go like this. Now, I'm not erasing any lines yet, because I might, I might use that line. Okay, how's our distance? Looks good. How's our, our ear height? Okay, they're pretty even. Let's sketch in this ear. Getting that nice little fox bump. Let's go to our eye. Okay, that's good. I'm going to go to the rim of the ear. Let's put in a bit of that detail now. I love red foxes. They have the most beautiful black at the top of their ears. This is a guy who, was, who lives near my sister in Maine. He's so funny, he, he comes and he, um, he's just covered in snow and he sits in the yard and he's just absolutely covered with snow because they have about three coats of fur. So he's not even cold, it, it's, it's adorable. All right, back to work. So this lesson is also going to be beginner values. And values are the darks and lights of a piece. So what I want you to do is squint. We do a lot of squinting as artists. People think we are like, what are, you, what are you doing? But the squinting will show you where the major areas of the darks are without your eye getting fooled by detail. I'm gonna to start to add in those values now. And as we begin to add in those values, because this is a furry animal, it's going to help us make this face look three-dimensional. All right, so where do you see the darkest? I'm gonna start up here. Again, I'm not holding my pencil in a writing fashion. I'm not pressing too hard. I don't want to press too hard and make this look like a black hole. All right, next spot. Usually an animal, there's always shadow in the ear somewhere. When I go down to next to the eye, that's pretty dark there, right? Next to this eye, corner of this eye, corner of this eye, down the snout. Now a fox's snout is a little narrower than a dog's. Whoa, that's dark. Let's add that now. See how it's beginning to come together? I'm gonna use this time to work on the fluff around the head. There's some dark here. Don't be stubborn, hold your pencil this way, I promise you.
sometimes when I feel stubborn and I start drawing too tight, I really regret it. <laughs> okay, so how much further? We're measuring again. How much further down from that dark part of fur are we? I'm going to come up and around. And like this. That's good enough for now. It's beginning to take shape, right? Okie dokes. Now we can get into the fun part, the details. I'm going to start with the eyes. One of the most, the, one of the prettiest things about a fox is their eyes. It's like they have on makeup, an eyeliner. Very, very dark. So in, I'm pretty happy with the size of this pupil. So now I have to think about all around it. All right, so that's, let's start to draw the dark on top, the dark on the side and underneath, and this dark here next to the snout. In color, fox, the, the red fox's eyes are quite often a beautiful orange color. Now I don't want to color in this whole eye with one shade. I want to do a few different values. There's always a highlight in a living person or animal's eyes. That's a very important aspect to have that makes your drawing look alive. So right now I'm just going to draw in not one, a light value, leaving the area white that I see. I'm not going to think about, there are like, like four or five other values in that eye. I don't want to think about that right now. I just want to get everything beginning to relate to each other. All right, let's go over to this one. Of below out to the edge. Now I'm thinking about that the darkness of that value. Remember when I sketched it in? Let's go over that now a little bit darker because we're now in relationship to the eye. Everything on your piece is in relation to the other. I'm going to make that pupil a little bit more pronounced there. Again, the slit like a cat. Sometimes they can be wide. It can look like a, um, a person's pupil if they're wide slits. That highlight is there, so I'm just going to put a very light value in there. Okay, going down, I'm going to use the eyes as a departure point to go down the snout. How does this value relate to this one? Let's soften this one a bit, go under the eye a bit, right? Is it as dark? Is it a, or is it lighter? Let's go over to this eye. So right now these eyes are really dark, so we have to bring other darks into our piece. So let's relate. This fox is very relatable. Okay. That's pretty dark there, right? And as we go down the snout, it's pretty dark in here. Going out to his little, little cheek. Ah, oh, the mouth is pretty dark, isn't it? How does this value compare to this value? About the same.
chin and this darkness. Let's start to get, lay that in. All right, time to tackle the nose. So the fox's nose is similar to a dog's nose. You usually have a ridge here and it comes around to the nostril. Now in different lighting, you not it's not always going to look exactly even. The light might catch on this part of the not the bottom part of the nostril there, and a different part of the nostril on the other side. So keep an eye on where your light is shining. In this piece, most of this side of the nose is dark. Again, I don't want to press too hard. I can build up my values. A little harder to take them away than to build them up. There's a little triangle of light there. Alrighty, he's really starting to take shape. Okay. Time to go back up to the ears, right? Well, actually, I'm gonna jump, and that's okay. You say, oh, wait a minute, I'm gonna do a little black in that nose there. Let's get this darker. Now I can hold, I'm holding my pencil, like I'm a writing utensil now. I'm going to ha have a little bit more control over it. And I'm moving a little fast because it gives you a little bit of a fur look. But you don't have to go as fast. You can take your time. All right, so I'm up here. I'm not dark enough yet. So I'm going to go the other way, and that's called cross hatching. You can build up. So the first time I was going this way, right? So now I'm going to go up and down, and now I'm going to go this way. That's going to build up my darkness. Okay, so I'm up here. Ah, it's not white up there, is it? All right, so let's let's put in a light value here. Now this is all being done with one pencil. It's great to get pencils of all different. Um, numbers and uh, we'll talk about that in the future but you can do a, a lot with just a number two pencil okay so that whoa that's dark in there all right now I'm not quite sure who do that's dark so but where is that ah okay so I'm gonna come here and down from here and down and around, and that dark is underneath that. I'm also going to show you some tricks with an eraser today. We're going to leave that spot for an eraser trick. Now, when you're doing fur, it's good to go into the fur, and that gives it a soft look. So I'm drawing into the fur. All right, let's go to this ear. Where is that? Where are those darks? Here? Ah, the top is not white, is it? Let's put in a value, but it's not as dark as this, is it? Always comparing. Good comparing. Dark. Now, what's the shape of that darkness? So, I'm, like, doo, 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 doo. So I'm going to follow the shape of that darkness. And where does it stop? Kind of at that, a little bit above that bump. And there's a sneaky dark spot right here. Okay, take a look. Hmm. I'm going to go back now and work on a little bit more detail of the eyes. Darkness coming up this way. I'm going to add some dark to the pupils and they will look very three-dimensional just draw what you see don't draw what you think right now just draw what you see look often at your subject matter I'm gonna go a little darker there all right let's all right let's have some fun 
let's start to put in the fur on the rest of the body. And that is a medium tone, a medium value. So I'm going to press lightly. Pay attention when you're making a pet portrait or an animal portrait of which way the hair is going. You want your strokes to be going that way as well. And look, I'm back to holding my pencil the sketching way. Oh, I forgot to do the hair here. <laughs> oh, there's always time. If you forget an area, that is okay. Again, this is just the beginning. Let's do some more big strokes. And remember, we're going to be using the eraser. So you can do all your strokes. And we'll talk about the light areas very soon. Gonna bring some dark down. It's a, it's a little, there's a lighter value than this dark going down the center. And as I'm here, I'm like, ah, oh, wait a minute, there's more dark going up to that mouth. Lay that in now. When you do the values on either side of the snout, it makes the snout come forward. The snout is a structure. So you always want to think about, I'm going to draw right on top of this because we're learning. This is not a perfect, supposed to be a perfect drawing. The snout is like this, right? If you picture, if you had to make the snout out of cardboard, what would you do? Round it here, right? Okay. Eraser time. Now I'd like to put a lot of fur over here to show you something. Also as you work, your hand might be smudging by accident. And that's okay because that can give your drawing a softer look. You can also smudge on purpose. So I'm going to smudge this with my finger on purpose. You can also use a stick that they sell at the art stores. So we have two light areas, which really makes the fur feel like it's this way. So now I'm going to use my eraser. This is called a kneaded eraser, and it takes off a little value at a time. I'm going to add in some more dark here. here. Your eraser is as much of a friend as your pencil is. You draw with your erasers. This is called a kneaded eraser. I also use a polymer eraser for crisper lines. So I'm going to take away that structure drawing I just did quickly. It's okay if there's still lines there because we're now going to talk about the hairs on the snout. The hairs on animal snouts are shorter, so you make your pencil lines a little shorter. And you do lots. You can do as many as you like. And down the side of the snap. I'm going to add some more dark to the nose. 
So I'm thinking about my relationships. Some value around the eye. Now I'd like the eye to belong to the head a little bit better. So I'm going to bring the hairs down into the eye. I want to soften that edge. You can add more darkness into your pet's fur by adding more lines. You don't have to value using the side of your pencil. Okay, I'm gonna use my other pencil, I mean my other eraser here and soften this. Let's get those whiskers showing up now. So now that you're warmed up, you probably might, you probably feel comfortable <laughs> just putting in those whiskers in one shot. You ready? <laughs> now you don't want them all the same length or the same light or darkness. That would make your drawing a little too boring. there. And again, doesn't have to be the same as mine. Every fox is different, right? I'm going to soften that one. I don't really like that curve I did. Make that into another whisker. Okay, while I'm at the whiskers, I see, ah, I'm not as dark as I should be over here. Let's add some detail to the chin. Let me draw that line a little bit better. It comes up. The mouth has a very nice smile. How far does it come up? Comes up to here. How far does this mouth piece come up? To there. A little more darkness, so I'm going to go cross hatching across. And go back to the fun part. <laughs> Pull that beautiful fur. And again, you can spend as much time as you want on it. I think I want to go back up to this ear for a minute. And we're almost done. Remember, everyone's art shouldn't look exactly like everyone else's, and every fox is different. And there are many different breeds of foxes. I'm going to make this nostril a little bit darker. I'm going to get, I'm going to be, go a little darker here while I'm here. See how we jump around? It's okay to jump around in your piece. <laughs> going to make the little holes in the nostril a little bit more pronounced. Now we're getting to the part of the now we're getting to the part of the finishing touches. So I think we're out of time. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'd love for you to share what you've drawn with me. See you next time.